welcome back to what will be a very juicy episode because we are talking today about one of your favorite topics to listen to and to ask me questions about, and that is getting your man to lead. I feel like I could never do enough episodes on this topic if I tried. So if I'm correct, please tell tell me so. Um, So firstly, before we even jump in, At the time of listening to this, I will be just about to go to Australia, which I'm so excited for. So there will obviously be lots of behind the scenes on my Instagram and the behind the scenes bubble. And then I have set up lots of emails that I'll be sending out to you guys who are kind of behind the scenes of the trip because there is so many parts that we're doing on the trip, right? Like firstly, we um, are going to be in Sydney for a few days. We'll have lots of time with friends. I'm going with um, a couple of my friends to do a bunch of bridal fittings, which I'm very excited for because I am not... 99.9% sure that I'm going to get a custom dress for the wedding. And Australian designers just like, they're the shit. Like I've tried on a lot of design, a lot of dresses from US designers. And whilst of course they're beautiful, I just love something that is outside the box, especially for my wedding dress. I'm like, I want to walk down the aisle in something so unique that is just like this perfect blend of traditional, but like contemporary and modern and sexy and just like different and all the things, you know? So I think I'm going to get my dress made in Australia, which is nice because then I also have a little bit of an Australian touch in the wedding. So then after we do that, then we go to Melbourne. I'm going to do some more fittings with my mum in Melbourne, which I'm so excited for such a special moment for us. And then we are full systems go with setting up the final things for the event. So if you're curious of like the behind the scenes of all those kind of little last minute knickknacks and what really goes behind, what goes on behind the scenes, I mean, a small part of it anyway, because I really could not film all of it if I tried. Uh, There will be a YouTube video that I'm actually going to make of kind of the behind the scenes of everything for the event. So keep a lookout for that. Um, I can't believe I'm about to ask you this question because I never thought the day would come. But let's be real. So Instagram content, before I get into this topic, if you don't listen to this, just fast forward. So Instagram content is short-lived, right? Like it it has a short timeline. Obviously, Instagram stories are 24 hours. Um, and so if you miss something, like you are fully clueless when I'm posting something the next day that's relating to something from the day before, right? And it can be just kind of annoying. And it's obviously, you know, it doesn't feel like work to me because I've just done it forever. But I have been doing some research lately. And obviously, for those of you that don't know, YouTube is always the number one player when it comes to social media. And whilst we post the podcast on YouTube, so if you like to be able to, you know, watch all of my movements um, and whatnot as I'm doing the podcast, then you can throw it on your TV whilst you're making dinner or whatever. Um, But, and you know, on YouTube, I've posted before like a tour of my New York City apartment, how I manifested my New York City apartment. Like I've posted those things very sporadically, but I've been thinking lately, I like hate myself that I'm saying this because I don't want to be a YouTuber. That's not what I'm saying. And I could never do vlogs, but I've been thinking lately. And I say I could never do vlogs because like, I just would forget to use my camera and I just don't have the desire to like, literally video every single part of my day, if that makes sense. But I'm also really open to the fact that you guys are curious about random things that go on behind the scenes or in my life and whatnot. And whilst I can post stuff on Instagram, it's not the same I've realized as being able to open up a YouTube video on your TV. It's horizontal. So it's like you're watching a movie. And what I've noticed is that you know, when I'm watching some of these vlogs and I've never been a vlog watcher, never been a YouTube watcher, but a friend kind of got me into it. She was like showing me something. And I'm like, wait, this is so calming to watch. Like every TV show these days is stressful and alarming to my nervous system. But just watching someone like tidy their child's nursery, I'm like, this is so soothing to my nervous system and relaxing. So I've kind of been thinking of maybe doing you know, a few videos every now and again, um, at least to start with, it would just be sporadic where I am kind of doing what I do on Instagram, but more long form content in more detail. And so that you guys can watch it like a week later and you don't feel the need, you don't feel like this FOMO if you don't see my Instagram stories that day, especially with coming up to like the wedding and stuff. I mean, if I were you guys, I mean, I want to see everybody's wedding. I want to see everybody's behind the scenes. I want, I love the behind the scenes kind of content. I think it's just so inspirational, so sexy, so fascinating. So I do want to see the behind the scenes, but I also don't want to stress having to watch somebody's Instagram story all the time. And I hate that you couldn't go, that you can't go back and watch some somebody's Instagram story from like a few weeks later, a few weeks prior. I know you have highlights, but let's just be real. They're not the same. So 
I really need you guys to weigh in on this for me. If you are like, yes, please, Monica, start doing YouTube videos. Can you please send me an email or a DM? Maybe a DM is easier. Send me a message on Instagram. Tell me that like you've listened to the episode. Yes, you would like it. And if you have any ideas of what you would like to see and and hear from me or whatever, however you say that correctly in like YouTube terms, um, please let me know because that's going to help give me a really good idea. I don't want to add this onto my plate. So I would be really trying to do it as a way of like, instead of posting so much on Instagram, I would then actually have like more, um, I would, I would allocate time to make YouTube videos that would mean that maybe I pull back on my Instagram stories a tad, but you get more in the YouTube video, if that makes sense. So please let me know your thoughts because I'm very curious about it. Okay. Let's jump in. Let me have a sip of my tea. I've got a bit of a weird throat today. I don't know. My fiance and I caught something on our recent trip to Turks and I didn't really care. I just, I just, I've had this like husky kind of vibe in my throat for two days. It's very weird. Like I feel fine, but my throat is not. Um, but I also want to say for anyone that is curious about Turks and Caicos, it was really nice. Like I'm not going to die that. It was, it was really beautiful. Like we went jet skiing. It was really fun, etc. Like the water is incredible but I wasn't blown away by it. It is so expensive. I'm talking at the airport. I, I got three bottles of water, right? Normal size. And I spent 25 US dollars. When she said that, I nearly like choked on my own spit. I was like, what is happening? Um, it was crazy. Like breakfast every morning was minimum $90 for the two of us. And like, we're just ordering eggs and avo and a green tea, you know, we don't drink dinners were so expensive. I just, I loved it and it was incredible. And I'm obviously so grateful for that trip, but I know you guys are curious. I'm like, go somewhere else, go somewhere else. You'll get the same water. You'll get the same kind of vibe. The food will be a bit better. Like, honestly, I'm like, go to Greece. Yes. You spend a little bit more on the airfares from say the U S. Um, but honestly, it all ends up being the same cost because the price of food and water and like, oh my God, we got in a taxi guys. I'm not joking. I'm not joking when I say this. We got in a taxi. The taxi was a four minute ride, four, four, one, two, three, four, right? Four minute ride. And it cost us $50. I'm not joking. We went out for dinner one night and it was maybe like a 10 minute ride or something. And it cost us $60. Basically it's like $10 per person. Like doesn't matter where you're going. Um, and there were six of us. Anyway, that being said, I'm like, go somewhere else. Keep a look. You love Greece. You love that kind of like beach summer European vibe. You may want to keep a lookout for things. Just planting a seed. Um, for anyone that has listened to this podcast this far in, and that is not skip forward to the emasculation bit or the letting a man lead, there's a little bit of a sign. Um, yeah, I'd keep a lookout. I would... Make sure you're on my email list and make sure you've added my emails as a contact so that you don't miss anything because something could possibly happen. I'm really hoping it does. Got to work logistics out, but we'll just leave that there. Okay. So let's jump in to the actual topic of today's episode, but I hope that you guys love that little fun intro. Um, so Today, we're talking about the energetics of getting your man to lead. As the title has said, there are kind of three parts that I'm going to dive into in today's topic, in today's like episode um, to kind of break it up for you guys. So the first is talking about the actual relationship. The second, I want to talk about like the second part is talking about like self-care and personal growth. And then the third kind of component is communication. Think about it in terms of like there's three umbrellas. And if you are nailing nailing yourself. Interesting. If you are nailing yourself under each umbrella, it's going to then create an environment and an energy where your man is leading and you're not having to like say it. And before anyone goes, no, like this isn't possible for you to just change your energy and then for him to start leading. Um, it is just go to one of the like five high or six or seven highlights. I have so many of results from like Queen Alchemy, Be Love and Not a Mother, one on one. There's one that says results, like all the things. And just look at how many times women have said these incredible things that, that their man is, that, that, that their partner, man, whatever, is starting to do. And they haven't changed, like they haven't asked him shit. Just like it's just happening, right? Because they are stepping more into their feminine and really appreciating his masculinity. Okay. So, <clears throat> 
All right. First thing is when it, when it comes to like the relationship and we can kind of think about the relationship as like the third component of the rela- of the relation of like you and him, right? There's you, there's him, and then there's the relationship. Um, and all of those things need adequate time, energy, resources put in towards them. You are an important part. He is a, an important part. And then the relationship itself is also an important part. So it's important for you as a woman to put effort into being able to learn how to switch between the masculine and feminine energies, right? A man isn't going to lead you if you cannot let him do so. So relationships require effort. We all know that. But if you are not putting the effort into letting him lead, being in your feminine and creating the kind of energetic and emotional and physical space for his masculinity to then come in and kind of take up that space, there isn't the room energetically for him to step into that leadership. So there needs to be the energetic space for him to step into that leadership. Now, part of that energetic space, right? And this is a very multi-layered topic. Part of that energetic space, I mean, it can look like a million different things, but one of them is you actually having your own boundaries. Boundaries in a relationship and ensuring that you don't lose yourself in a partner, it means that you're not then like energetically hooking onto him, creating that smothering energy where he then feels a lack of space. You don't want that, right? Because when you are, when you kind of start to lose yourself in a relationship, it can often show up as like edginess and resentment and bitterness and uh, like basically creating a masculine armor for yourself. When he feels that, because men feel, we need to give men like a bit more credit than what we actually do. When he feels that armor and that edginess and that bitterness, that does not make him want to lead you more especially depending on how the relationship has been in the past, like especially if you're trying to repolarize the relationship, he could very well go into that boy, like archetype in a way, because he's afraid that he's done something wrong. And then you are the one that has to fix it. He doesn't actually come in to fix it. Obviously, if you're with a masculine man where you've, you know, you're in a polarized relationship, then it could be a completely different situation. But when there is a lack of boundaries in yourself, key thing yourself, because for whatever reason, insecurities, attachment issues, whatever, whatever. When there is a lack of lack of discipline for yourself, lack of respect for yourself, I mean, lack of self-worth, list could fucking go on. When there is a lack of boundaries with yourself, it bleeds into the relationship with him. And then it creates a lack of space because of the smothering, right? And the kind of like energetic hooking into him. That lack of space is felt by him inhibiting him from him to energetically step up and and have him lead you, right? So when we are wanting a man to start to step up and lead in our relationship and when we're wanting to like repolarize things in our relationship, it takes a lot of self-discipline. It's kind of a funny thing where if you've been in your masculine forever and you're like, okay, I actually need to really get into my feminine and repolarize the relationship, blah, blah, blah. Like there are some habits that you're going to have to break. And the funny thing is obviously is those habits are a masculine thing. So then you have to do, you almost have to then bring in more masculine to break those habits so that you can be in your feminine, right? And that's why I was saying before of like, you know, you knowing that balance between your masculine and your feminine is essential Because you can be in a masculine, like a healthy space, and you can be in a feminine in a healthy space, or you could be a masculine in an unhealthy space, feminine in an unhealthy space. You want to be thinking about, okay, like you're going to have to bounce between the two when you're repolarizing the relationship because you need the discipline to repolarize the relationship. And you need the discipline to actually step up and do your part, which is going to require a bit of a masculine energy. But can you have that masculine energy without this like hard hyper masculinity and more than masculine energy of like, self-respect, like deep self-respect, if that makes sense. <clears throat> and often a whole part of this whole thing of getting him to lead you is one of the number one reasons why a women find it so hard to eventually, let's say, or late in the future, let go and let him lead because in the past they weren't. It's because there is so much bottled up resentment. There's bottled up, you know, 
shit that he's done that you're holding against him. Like there's just, there's stuff under the rug that needs to be cleaned out. Friends, did you know that 41% of women in the US are now the main breadwinner in households? That is a very interesting statistic and the times are changing. And even though we as women are making a hell of a lot more money and having more choices than we used to, it's kind of like a double-edged sword, right? Because the double-edged sword is that feminine women, we, we still want our man to protect and to provide and to lead us. And I cannot count the amount of times women have come to me and told me as clients or emails or in DMs how frustrated they are by this lack of ambition that comes from him or lack of success and leadership. So additionally though, what's interesting to also note is that 73% of couples say that finances are the source of their tension. People, I do not want money being the reason that your relationship is falling apart. Yet these studies say that it is a real thing. So let's be proactive, right? You can still feel like he is providing and protecting you even if you make more money or you make any kind of money or you make just as much money. It's about learning how to embrace and be in this new modern dynamic and how to make it work for your relationship and your needs and your life. So my 13 part course, The Feminine Female Breadwinner is a unique revolutionary and first of its kind program that will give you everything that you need to allow yourself to be the breadwinner or one of the breadwinners. You know, you bring some money home and be in your feminine. So do not wait until your relationship is making you edgy and anxious and hanging on by a thread. Get ahead of it. If you want to join the Feminine Female Breadwinner, the link for that class is below. It is fucking amazing. And as you guys know, I am the breadwinner in my relationship and I am definitely the feminine in my relationship. When there is a lack of like forgiveness, and letting go of past hurt, it inhibits the relationship from feeling the way that you desire it to feel, right? So if you are trying to get your man to lead you, but you are actually testing him all the time, you don't trust him, you are holding on to all these past things that, you know, he, quote unquote, he's done, maybe he did, maybe he didn't, he's done, and you're not bringing those forth to actually heal you are like you are cock blocking yourself by holding on to past hurts. Like you're you're trying to punish him for what? Like what are you actually trying to get out of the situation? You're probably trying to get him to admit like I've done X Y Z wrong. But the issue is is that so many of us as women these days, which also blocks us from getting a man to lead, is that because of this kind of like overactive, you know, um, female empowerment movement, which is a good thing, right? But like when it gets too far, like anything, it's a bad thing, is that a lot of women can feel like we're always right, they're always wrong. And this is something that I go into in Embodying on Dating Number Two. And one of the one of the ladies in there, she actually wrote a message to me and she said, she said, thank you so much, Monica, for making a program where you're calling us out on our bullshit because I have realized that I've ha had such a part to play in the fights and the arguments and the resentment. And I've been blaming him the whole time, but actually it's a lot, it's, it's a lot of it is actually on me. And why this is important to bring up is like when you're on TikTok, when you're on Instagram, whatever, there is so much like blaming on the man. He's a narcissist. He's this, he's the this, he's the this. And I'm like, what is your role to play in not letting him lead? Like where energetically are you cock blocking yourself from him stepping up and being the man that you desire for him to be? And there's a couple of things like he needs to feel like he's got a purpose, like he's got a passion. He's got to feel important to you. He's got to feel needed. He's got to feel wanted. Like there's so many components that are very important for a man to feel like a man. And if you're not allowing him or supporting him to obtain and feel and embody those things. As my fiance says, if you're not letting him be him, because <laughs> I have her, like my program her, he's like, yeah, I'm being him, babe. I'm like, oh my God, I cannot. Um, if you're not allowing him to be quote unquote him, then how can he lead you, right? Remember that when you're in a relationship, like the two of you are bouncing off each other's energy. And so like relationships take work because if you are putting out this bad, resentful ugh, energy, 
then like what is he going to be feeling? And men want safety too. So if he then is feeling that ugh energy in return, it's not creating a space where his leadership would actually be received well. And remember, ladies, that in order for him to lead, he needs to be received. So the question for you is, would you actually receive him or would you not receive him? I always say this, but I'm going to hop on it again. I say this a lot in Be Loving on a Mother. Let him lead. Not get him to lead, not, you know, ask him to lead. No, like let it's that, that way of like, I need to let him lead. I need to make space for him to lead. It's about you taking a step back so that he can actually lead. Like, can you receive his leadership or not? Because if you subconsciously don't feel like you could receive his leadership or you would reject, reject it or self-sabotage it in some kind of way, when we're thinking about the energetics of him leading, right? So we're not asking, we're not say, asking for him to lead. We're not doing anything like obvious and physical and tangible. This is like an energetic change that's causing him to step up. When we're talking about those kind of energetic things, you need to be looking at your own subconscious because I'm sure as you guys know, like your subconscious is ruling major vast majority of your behavior, of your thoughts, of your habits, of your patterns. And this is something else to remember. I've got I'm fucking on fire right now. Is when you are in a healthy, safe relationship, or really when you're in when you're in a relationship where you know the person loves you, it kind of warrants and allows you to be your worst self. So have any of you guys ever like said something where you're like, why the fuck did I say that? That was so mean. But you just feel like you had to say it. Like you just wanted to be mean or you just like had to be mean for some reason. The reason why we can do this and why we can be like an effing bitch in our relationship sometimes is because we will be a bitch when we know that somebody won't leave us. That's why people will say often guys like she changed or he changed because guys can do it too when we got married. Or when I put a ring on the finger, it's like, oh, the real her came out because it's like that level of commitment is like, oh, thank God I can be my fullest self and he won't leave. Right. And so what will happen sometimes is like even in healthy relationships will be a bitch because we are craving to just be fully expressed. And it's like we know that we're not going to be left in a way. Um, and so because we're not going to be left, it allows us to just be a bitch. It's like the easiest place to not do work on yourself is your comfort zone. And when you're in this comfortable, keyword comfortable, safe, loving relationship, it's easy to not grow, to not expand because you don't have to, right? You can stay in like a toxic situation and maybe you won't leave, right? And so, and especially when there's a lack of self-respect from either you, him, or both, he won't leave if he doesn't respect himself. Or if you don't respect yourself, you won't leave. You'll stay in a toxic situation. And sometimes that is the, I've been talking to one of my one-on-one clients about this, of like, sometimes the meanest thing to do is stay in a relationship where the other person isn't stepping up because you're like affirming that their shit behavior is accepted. Sometimes the most loving thing for you to do is be like, I love you. And because I love you so much, I'm not tolerating this shitty behavior anymore. And so I'm leaving. That can sometimes be the most loving thing for you to do for someone, right? So coming back to like the energetics of getting him to lead, your subconscious is really, really important to look at in terms of your programming around men, what your perceived expectations are of him, even if they're not true. And then the last one is like, what is in your subconscious from previous situations with him that you haven't worked on, that you haven't healed, that you haven't brought up to him? Because if you are like, if you are constantly replaying the past, guess what? You're inhibiting your future with him and you're inhibiting his ability to feel like it's safe for him to lead. Really quickly, this one's for the ladies only. Sorry, men, but you have another program for you, the man. Queen Alchemy is currently open for the extended payment plan. So a few months prior to Queen Alchemy officially opening, I will softly be sharing that the extended payment plan is open. If you're on the wait list, you get emails about this. Not very many, but you get a few. So here is your reminder. If you want to join the next round of Queen Alchemy and you know or you think that you might need an extended payment plan, 
then please make sure that you are on the wait list or that you send us an email or that you fill in the form. And all you have to do is click the link below in the description. You'll be guided to the website page where you can read all, read all about this program that you all have heard about because it is the program of programs. And then you can fill in your form. I will email you making sure that everything is hunky-dory and it's a good fit for you. I'll answer any questions that you have, and then you will be able to secure your place, get early access, and have an extended payment plan. If you are wanting to do some extra one-on-ones with me in Queen Alchemy, or if I advise that for you in your case, you will also be able to work those extra one-on-ones into the extended payment plan as well. So if you know you need this, or if you haven't joined Queen Alchemy in the past because you haven't been able to make the regular payment plan work, then I really urge you to not self-sabotage because I'm not going to remind you very much and make sure that right now you pause this episode, that you fill in that form. And then when I email, you reply to the email, very excited that you are ready to rock and roll. And I will see you inside for the next round of my incredible program, Queen Alchemy kind of leaving that one there like subconscious, right? The next thing is patience. When you have been in a relationship for a long time that has not been you're in the feminine, he's in the masculine, or maybe it was, and then the roles got reversed because whatever happened. And now you're like, I fucking hate this. We need to go back to the way we were. You need patience with getting him to lead you. You need patience with your energetic changes to then kind of rub off. I wish I could say it's going to happen overnight, but it isn't necessarily going to happen overnight. I'm not going to say it's not because it could, but I'm not going to guarantee that, right? Being patient in your relationship is such a devalued thing in society these days because we live in this like fast paced next, 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 next. And I just want to say from my own experience in this relationship, one of the things that I love, and this wasn't necessarily the way in the beginning, and then we kind of caught it and we're like, let's slow down a little bit, is, you know, we 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 met and we wanted we knew we were gonna get engaged by the end of the year, and then we we thought we would get married this year, which is 2023. Yeah. We thought we would get married this year. And I actually came to him and like he's got no problem with being more patient. I'm the one that likes to kind of like go, go next. Um, and I came to him one day and I was like, babe can we actually get married a year later? I said, I am so excited to marry you. Like I would do it right now, but I really want to enjoy our relationship before we just get married. And then there's nothing else to look forward to in terms of those like levels of commitment and labels. And I said, and I also really want to set my business up in a way where I know that I have a day a week to do all wedding things because I, I'm like getting emotional even thinking about this. Oh my God, what the fuck? (laughs) I have been that girl, right? Literally crying right now. What is happening? I have been that girl that has had the wedding Pinterest board since forever, right? I've always been excited for my wedding. I've had a vision for my wedding and I actually shared it with him. Um, when we first started dating, I've had this like psychic vision for a very, very long time, literally forever. It's just like one location and I have such a clear image of it in my mind, never been to it or anything. Um, but it's like where I would get married. And whenever I would have visualized getting married, it would always be in this place. Um, anyway. And so when we first started dating, I like shared it with him I, and he was like, oh my God, I know where the place is. And he took me to this beautiful place in Atlanta, right? Which we looked at before we even got engaged to get married. And I was like, no, I don't like it. And it wasn't the exact spitting image. Well, I realized the other day, I can't believe, I haven't even said this to um, to my fiance. I realized the other day that where we are getting married is the spitting. And I didn't realize it. I didn't put two and two together when we were there. We We saw this place like nearly a month ago or a month ago by the time this is out actually. And it is a spitting image of what's been in my mind forever. Like I have basically in my mind, there's always been this like view and I'm like, and I always thought the view would be like, and I'm like, I, I couldn't see what was over the view, but there was a view, like we were high up. And I always was like, oh, is the view the ocean? I was like, I don't, I, I don't want to get married near the ocean. I'm, I'm not like an ocean baby. Um, And then I always knew there was a house behind, like a big villa kind of thing behind. I also knew that what else was really, it was garden. It was, but it wasn't like a heavy gut. It wasn't like a garden wedding of like a ridiculous amount of like flowers and bushes. It was like very subtle garden kind of thing. Anyway, whatever, I can go on and on. And I realized the other day on my walk that the place that we're getting married is a spinning image. Anyway, point is, is something that we've 
really blessed ourselves with is actually slowing down and just being a little bit more patient and taking our time so that we can really enjoy each phase of our life, each phase of our relationship. And what I want to share with you guys is when you are constantly in this rush, there creates a lack of space. And when there is a lack of space, there is a lack of flow, creativity, alignment, surrender for you as a woman and leadership as a man. When there is no space, you're in, you're literally running from your habits all the time, right? So you're just like in this like habitual response all the time. You don't get to actually be conscious and choose how you act. So when there is this lack of patience in your relationship or you're moving a million miles an hour all the time and like we move fast in the beginning, but didn't feel fast. And like, then we kind of were like, okay, now we're like, we're together. We're like locked and loaded. We're in this safe, healthy, like we moved fast because we were obsessed with each other and we like needed to be together all the time. But now that we are, it's like, okay, we can like pause. We have like our nervous systems are like, okay, we're together. Like we live to like, no one's going anywhere kind of thing. Um, anyway, point being is when there, when there is, when you're running from this like constant habit all the time, he then is running from a habit of not leading, right? Being the child, being the boy, uh, being passive, whatever it is. And you're then in this habit of being the leader, of being the masculine one, of being in this like hyper, you know, go, go, go state all the time. And you're not in that femininity and surrender that you, I know that you're desiring to be in. So even in your relationship now or in the way that you're dating, like let's do this for the way that you're dating as well, ladies, for the way that you're dating right now or for the way that you're in your relationship, like how, how could you slow down in a way that feels really good and like soft to your body so that if you were to like visualize the slowing down, there'd be this like energetic, like calm space around you. Cause that is a beautiful place to be in. Like I'll even give you an example unrelated to my relationship. So we came back from, at the time of this recording, we came back from Turks like last weekend on Sunday night. I want to go to New York because otherwise I'm not going to see my friends for a while. Um, because we're in Australia and la la la. So I was like, okay, I can go to New York this coming weekend or next weekend. And I, and I could go this weekend, but I decided, nope, I'm going to go next weekend because I know that I am going to feel karma overall in life and in my energy. If I have a weekend at home and then I go to New York and even though by the time I get back to New York, we then fly out for Australia on Thursday night, me going to Australia is me going home. So it's not, it's not going to be this like stressful, intense, like trip where everything's new, new, new. And that can be very draining to your nervous system. Like I'm going home. Right. And so, oh my God, that kind of thing makes me emotional. What is like, what is happening today? the moon or something. We're about to go. We're about to have a very intense, um, a very intense moon. Anyway, in Scorpio, wait, this makes sense. The tears, the water energy. <laughs> um, so even for your life, like how can you create more space to allow you to be more in that like receptive feminine energy for yourself? Because taking things slow and a allowing the relationship to develop in a way that feels very calm and natural, and of course, in a way that feels right and authentic to the, to the, to the two of you, not to others, is a priceless experience that's going to allow the two of you to feel more in sync, the two of you to feel in alignment, and therefore the energetics and the polarity, of course, is going to be there as a result, right? And here's the thing, like a masculine man doesn't want to rush a relationship and like pressure anything. If he knows he wants you, he's going to make that very fucking clear, but it's not going to feel like rushing. It's actually going to feel so calm, right? He will claim you when he wants to claim you. And trust me, you want to be on his timeline, right? But at the same time, like I do want you guys to know that you can be moving quickly and it not feel rushing. You can be moving quickly and it can be like in terms of like the outside eye, like your human eye, but energetically it can feel calm, slow, and right, if that makes sense. Okay. So the next thing I want to mention in terms of the like relationship so that he can really step up and lead you is to make sure that you take responsibility for your own actions in things. A man is attracted to a woman that has herself because when he knows that you've got yourself, 
he then doesn't feel like, oh, because you don't want a man that feels like I have to save her, right? Or that she's like this wounded soldier because then you're going to get like an unhealthy masculine man. You want your man to feel like she's got herself and like she'll do everything herself if she has to, but I don't want her to. Like that's so horrible. I don't want her to have to do all that heavy lifting by herself. Let me come in and do that for her. One of my um, guy friends once actually said basically this to me. He said, I love helping women, but I love helping a woman more when I see her trying to do it for herself first, because it's like I'm coming in and like I'm protecting her from the burden of that task. He was like, for some reason, I feel more like full body yes when she's trying to do it for herself, because it's like how did he say it? It was like, it's not coming from like this victim or poor me or like Rapunzel, Rapunzel energy. It's coming from this place of like, she knows that she can do it. So she's going to start. But then as soon as you offer, she's like, yes, please do it for me. And he's like, that feels so much better because then I don't feel like she's just putting everything on me and kind of like this what it was and kind of like abusing my masculinity and my leadership. It feels then like she gets to really cherish and appreciate my leadership. And I'm coming in in a way that feels really good. I'm not doing things out of obligation to her because this is the thing, like men are going to always help, right? You don't want to feel that you don't want him to feel obligated to help you though, because that's not the sexy energy either. You want him to feel like he wants to help you and he wants to provide for you and he wants to lead you. And that's really going to happen when he knows that you can provide and protect and lead yourself. But as soon as he's there and offering to do it, you're like, oh my God, please. So that doesn't mean like push back. That doesn't mean you be the protector, you be the provider, you be the leader. Like that's not what I'm saying, right? Because he doesn't want that. It's that he, he can feel in your energy, this is all energetics, he can feel in your energy that you can do all those things yourself and that you can lead yourself and that you can provide for yourself and that you can do whatever. But as soon as he jumps in, it's like, oh my God, please, thank you. Yes, 100%. Like do that for me, fix that for me, et cetera. That is the feeling that like, that is the kind of exchange that is sexy and alluring for a man because then he doesn't feel like you are a burden at all. And he wants to constantly gift you with his masculinity because he knows that you're going to take it number one but number two he also knows that you are not going to like abuse it or take advantage of it if that makes sense okay so kind of jumping to the topic of like you really ensuring that you are embodying her through your self-care and your own personal growth by you prioritizing and valuing the importance of your own self-care. And when I say self-care, I do not mean, you know, like just having a bath and like doing that, like, oh, self-care. No, self-care is like, is like deep acts of kindness towards yourself, right? It's deep self-respect. It's, uh, I think the word self-respect, by the way, I should do a whole episode on this. I think the word self-respect is a way more powerful word than self-love because you can do something that is very respectful to yourself, that doesn't feel as light as self-love. Like self-love really comes across as like this light, girly, fun, you know, like pink kind of thing. Self-respect feels like so grounded and it feels strong and it feels sturdy. It feels like unwavering, right? So when you are taking care of yourself so that you feel sexy for yourself, so that you have your best energy, so that you are magnetic, so that you are radiating, When you are your best self, you become the muse for him. I'm going to say that again. Be the muse for your man. I know I've said it before, but I'm like, I need to fucking like slogan this shit. Be the muse for your man. It works. Trust me. When you are like men for centuries have been attracted and allured and, you know, (laughs) almost abused in a way by the muse of the femininity. Right. I mean, we know, for example, that the sirens back in the day were this like hypnotizing muse and essence that men would, you know, not be able to control themselves around. So like our femininity is dangerous in that men are allured by it. They are hypnotized by it. They are so deeply attracted by it, right? So when you put the effort into yourself 
to feel like even a muse for yourself, like be your own muse. You can then also be the muse for him. Energetically, that's going to then help him to step more into him and become more of the man, right? As my program, become more of the man so that he can then lead you in the way that you are desiring for him to do so. So in your life as a starting point, do you feel like balanced in all the different facets of your life? Because when you have a balanced system and balanced health, you then have a balanced libido. You are radiating. You have that large amount of chi energy or life force energy that radiates outside of you. That's what makes you turn your head when that woman that just is glowing walks into the room. So instead of just focusing on like external validation or external success, what things do you really need to be doing for yourself so that your system, your body, like physically and energetically actually feels more balanced so that you can, you know, embody her for want of a better way to kind of put it in like a succinct way. So when you are then embodying this version of you and you are showing up like this for yourself, how do you think that rubs off on your partner? right? I always say this, don't shove personal development or any of this kind of work down someone else's throat. Just be the muse, right? Be the inspiration, be the light for want of a better word. So by you being the example, by you being the inspiration that can like magnetize and pull him in to then showing up at the, at the same level as you, or if he's not showing up as the same level as you, maybe that's a good thing. Because then maybe that's a great filter system of like, oh, not the one, right? You want somebody that is going to rise to your level. Of course, let's, I'm saying, granted, you are fully embodied in an aligned feminine self. You're not, you know, being a bitch. You're not thinking that you are, that's like your way of the highway. You're not being egotistical, like all those kind of things. You are this really grounded, scented, divine feminine embodiment. And remember, your flavor of the feminine can look different to my flavor of the feminine, to other people's flavor of the feminine, but it's about you feeling fully in alignment with yourself. You want someone that can like match that and rise to that level as well. And part of having that deep self-respect and being the muse for yourself and therefore for him to then adjust your energetic field is self-reflection. Like, do you take the time to actually assess your needs and your desires and what's happening in your relationship and maybe anything that you have to change in yourself to benefit the relationship? Do you take responsibility for your emotions, for your reactions, for your things as well? Because by by actually having that self-reflection, like, no, it's not easy in the beginning, but God damn, does it make you feel so grounded and whole in yourself? Because you know that you've taken responsibility responsibility for your part so you can feel really grounded in whatever you are intending to call forward in your partner if that if that all kind of like lands for everybody I hope it does so to kind of wrap up today's episode I know there's been like so many different facets so you really might want to go back to this episode I'm not joking and either re-watch or re-listen if you're on YouTube please make sure that you click subscribe if you're on podcast again please subscribe and whatnot you might want to go back and I would if I were you and literally make some notes because I've jotted down so many nuggets for you guys so I really want to make sure that you actually get them so that you can get the most out of these episodes and all of the episodes. And okay, the last thing I want to mention is around finances with getting him to lead. So I know there are many of you where you are maybe making the same amount of money as your partner, or you're making more money than your partner, or you're still just like contributing heavily to your relationship and you feel like money gets in the way. Maybe you feel like because you make more money or because you just make the same amount of money or around about the same amount of money, it immediately puts you into the leadership role. So this is something that I'm asked about all the time. Um, and what I really want you guys to think about is everything that I've obviously been saying today, but I want you to get really clear for yourself on what money does for you. Like what does money even mean for you? Why do you like money? Why do you want to make money? Why do you want to have more money? Get really clear on what is behind the energy of money, right? Like speaking about the energetics, get really clear on what is actually behind the energetics of money. Get behind what is, sorry, get clear on what is behind the energetics of your desire for him to lead you. And like, what is the correlation? Like what, if you look at those two things, let's say for homework, you write down 
you know, the energetics behind what you make money mean and like making money and wanting more money. And then you write down the energetics behind him leading, you desiring to, for him to lead, etc. Look at those two things and like, tell me the correlation, like fucking send me a DM. Tell like, I'm serious. Tell me the correlation. Tell me what is happening between the two of them, because there is such a link with money and masculinity because we live in a world where money is very, very masculine. So, and we add that energy to money, right? Money is a blank canvas. We add energy to money. Healing your relationship with money is probably one of the most freeing things that you will do, especially if you make money as a woman and you are desiring for your man to lead. Because let me tell you, money can fuck some shit up in a relationship if you let it and if you're not aware of this. So looking at those like two kind of correlations, what needs to change for you around the way in which you are perceiving leadership from him and the way in which that you are perceiving money? Because you are the one that is adding the definition to money and he is then adding his definition to money. And there could be a massive mismatch that is creating this kind of like edginess and tension because you guys aren't aligned on the way in which you value money or you want to spend money or X, Y, and Z. So as you look at those two things, I really, what I want, I, what I encourage you guys to actually think about for homework is not just about like what you make money mean, like blah, 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 but also the way in which you are using money as a way to like dangle a carrot in front of him. And what I mean by dangling a car, a carrot in front of him when it comes to like making money is that what I've noticed for a lot of women is they're now making money. And they kind of are abusing their new power. Um, we don't have the same innate desire to provide like a man does. So what can happen sometimes is that when we are making money, it's like, well, we don't want to share it. We don't like, we don't want to provide, like we don't want to give that to you. It can feel different. Whereas a man will just give his money to you and be like, spend it, go buy a handbag, whatever you want to do. Because he's like, I'm making money for you. But a lot of women are like, no, I'm making money for me. Like I want that money. And so what happens is, is that we create all this wealth and we want someone to share it with, right? It's like, what the fuck? We want someone to share it with. We dangle the carrot in front of his head, in front of his face, whatever you want to say, in front of his nose, whatever it is, eyes, lol. And it causes so much edginess and tension and like just fucked up energy in the relationship between the two of you. It can cause a lot of resentment on his side, but it also can cause you to put yourself in that mother role and you kind of force him into that son role. Reflect this week on how you are forcing yourself into that mother role. Like you're just fucking taking charge and more importantly, how you are forcing him into the son role. So if you are dangling the carrot in front of his head, about all the money you make, for example, or that you won't let him spend it or that you're controlling it or whatever it is. And you're doing it from this mothering place where you're shoving him into the sun archetype because what you don't trust him or you want him to try and prove something to you or you're testing him or whatever it is. He ain't going to be fucking leading, right? Like the end, he is not going to be leading because guess what? You are not letting him lead. You are not creating a relation, uh, an environment for him to lead. Like you are literally putting a cork in the hole of possible leadership, right? If inside the champagne bottle is him lead is his leadership, you ain't letting that shit explode out. You ain't enjoying it. You are not drinking it. You are putting a cork in it and putting it back in the fridge. So let's end there. <laughs> so abrupt, but like whatever. Um, let's end, I've gone on for like 50 minutes. My throat is not okay. I need to get on a hair call in a second as well. So I need to regroup. Um, but I really hope that you guys love this episode with a little bit of a husky voice as well. Do not forget to make sure that you check down below in the description of like what's happening right now, because that's kind of like your news, your, your newsletter, et cetera, um, of what's coming up, what you need to be aware of, blah, 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 blah. So I hope that you guys love today's episode. Of course, I'm always here and wanting to listen and wanting to know your recommendations, your requests for episodes, blah, blah, blah. And if you are in a relationship where you make money as does your partner or you make more money than your partner, 
then I would highly recommend joining the Feminine Female Breadwinner. Everything in there has changed my life when it comes to the relationship I have with my fiance. And we actually kind of made that program together in that I sat down with him and was like, are there any missing pieces? So there's a lot in that program that he has also had input on, which is amazing from like a man's perspective too. So that is open for you guys to join. And also the last thing is that we are currently enrolling for extended payment plans for Queen Alchemy for round 12. So if you would like to join at Queen Alchemy round 12, please make sure that you submit your form. This will actually be the last round at this price. There's going to be a slight price increase for the next one just because of the, the amount of hours that I give you guys with Q&As in the Telegram group. It's probably about an extra 10 hours plus that you get um, of like voice message answers that are really in depth over the seven weeks, which you have forever as well. So th there is going to be a slight increase pr in price for Queen Alchemy round 13. I cannot believe we're there. So if you want to join round 12 and if you need an extended payment plan or if you just want to be able to get the content early to start getting ahead, then please um, submit the form via the link below and we will get that all sorted for you guys. I hope that you all have a lovely rest of your day. Do not forget to tune in to next week's episode because it is going to be a juicy one. Next week we are talking, and last week we did the sex life as well, but uh, next week on the episode we are talking about my top manifestation secrets to never forget get and how to make every moment a manifestation practice. I know you guys are going to love it. So I will see you guys next week.